Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. There is some news happening, uh, continuing news of a spiraling out of control currency de devaluation in Venezuela that really won't save its economy from collapse. And this comes to us from the conversation in his opinion piece here about the situation in Venezuela, um, about uh, some reforms that we're seeing here and uh, with regards to its currency. So let's take a look and see what they have to say. And let's keep in perspective as we go through this, you know, especially in terms of precious metals. I'm going to take a look in, at that here uh, later too to see what exactly silver is doing in Venezuela. But that's an extreme case. But look around the other nations around the world too. Take a look at what silver and gold are trading for in their currencies compared to the dollar. And because uh, we tend to kind of look at things in a silo for those of us living in the United States. And uh, for many people who criticize, you know, the low gold and silver prices and say, well, gold and silver are not preserving your wealth and not saving your money. But you have to take a look at things through a little wider lens to understand really uh, what's behind the move in silver prices here in the United States compared to around the world. Because I would dare say that more than likely, if gold and silver are going down, it's going to happen to more, some of the first world nations, more economically prosperous nations. But even so, it's not as much as it's going down here in the United States. And in some countries, it may even be staying flat. The prices may be staying flat or even going up in other cases. And in extreme cases like this, Venezuela recently announced one of the most dramatic currency reforms in history in a move that essentially devalues the Bolivar by about 95%. It's ironically named the Bolivar Fuerte, meaning strong. Uh, first introduced 10 years ago, will be, will be replaced by a new sovereign version at a conversion rate of 100,000 to 1 sovereign. At the same time, the government's official exchange rate will be bumped from 285,000 bolivars per dollar to 6 million. And uh, it also should be of note that uh, the, um, uh, the Venezuelan government under Maduro is, is looking to also move to a cryptocurrency or back to currency by a petro and gold backed cryptocurrency. And this type of thing that you're seeing happen here is what will happen on a different level and a different scale and not as much under duress or a panic mode when the dollar is reset. Mark my words, it is coming. There will be a dollar reset and it will happen probably much quieter and much more organized and much more controlled than what we are seeing in Venezuela. But uh, make no mistake, there is inflation going on here in the United States. It's just in a controlled scale. It's being, um, you know, pumping the brakes, so to speak, on inflation with uh, int raising interest rates and the like. Uh, so the article continues, in his experience as a scholar of currencies, I have rarely seen a devaluation this large. In fact, Venezuela has confessed that its money has become virtually worthless and it's time to start over. But is a new start even possible? So we see the hyperinflation of steroids, and it is uh, definitely inflation is the cause. Also, you have a dictatorship, number one, and number two, you've got socialism, a horrible combination. Socialism by itself is horrible, but when you have a, essentially a dictatorship um, that runs under socialism, it's a recipe for disaster. And the people that suffer are the people. <laughs> it's not the leaders. Um, in recent years, price increases in Venezuela have accelerated exponentially and have long since entered the realm of hyperinflation, which is like inflation of steroids. Almost all countries experience some inflation, but rarely at a higher, uh, rate higher than low double digits. Hyperinflation, in which the rate surpasses 50% or more and begins to accelerate uncontrollably to triple digits and beyond. In today's Venezuela, domestic prices are rising at an annualized rate of 108,000%. An economist at the International Monetary Fund estimate by the end of the year that rate could top 1 million percent. Imagine the price of milk tripling every minute. From families on fixed income, the effect of this is devastating. Money that once sufficed to put a full meal on the table suddenly cannot even buy a loaf of bread.
Household essentials uh, that were once easily affordable would require wheelbarrows of cash. Uh, that's why I believe that there are desperate acts of a harried government rapidly running out of options. Indeed. So the odds of success is hardly the first country to respond to out-of-control inflation with the currency re-denomination. Many other nations over the years have found themselves in the same bind. In one decade, from the mid-80s to the mid-90s, neighboring Brazil burned its way through no fewer than four currencies, from the Cruzeiro to the Cruzado to the Cruzado Novo and the Cruzeiro Real. Of which time lopping off three, each time lopping off three zeros. During the same period, Argentina did the same. And more recently, in the first decade of the new millennium, uh, Zimbabwe repeated the agony, lopping off six and later nine zeros as a new one dollar followed another. Regrettably, redenomination on its own can do little to rein in inflation. Mainly, all it does is make life easier for ordinary citizens for a while. And then talks about the prices. We're going to look at the prices here in a moment. And the different thing is going to show some really revealing, revealing pictures. Uh, the benefit will be short-lived, if anything else, uh, than the slow inflation. If prices in the local cafe or, or produce market continue to rise, purchasing power will again be eaten away. Prices will return to the stratosphere. Uh, the key element of a currency reform is devaluation, which in principle is meant to stimulate domestic economic growth. In a, conventional, in a conventional textbook model, a devaluation simultaneously lowers the foreign price of exports and raises the domestic price of imports, hence expanding demand for domestic exportables and import substitutes. In other words, foreigners buy more of a country's goods because they're suddenly cheaper. At the same time, foreign goods become more expensive, encouraging locals to buy more domestic substitutes. The greater production the results, in turn, would then be uh, expected to ease inflationary pressures. And by the way, if you want to take a look at some of the analysis of what of Venezuela's situation, the currency, check out the Lang Peace channel on his uh, video, excellent video on Venezuela. Uh, textbook models, as, as any student of economics quickly learns, are simple, if not simplistic, affairs that rely on a lot of hidden assumptions that many. Uh, that may turn out to be misleading. The real world complications are everywhere. In, in Venezuela's case, 98% of export revenues are derived from oil, whose price is set in rural markets in dollars, not locally in bolivars. Devaluation of the bolivar will not change the price paid for Venezuelan crude. And it's a problem faced by many developing nations that rely extensively on commodity exports, including Brazil and Zimbabwe. The lack of control over world markets prices ignored in standard textbook models. In an economy like Venezuela, Venezuela, which has become so specialized in terms of, of what it produces, there's little domestic capacity to manufacture goods that can substitute easily for imports regardless of their price. They cannot simply start producing the vehicles or medical equipment or heavy machinery that in recent decades have been purchased abroad. That is another complication on account of foreign conventional models. Worst of all, devaluation may actually exacerbate the very problem it was meant to ease, namely inflation. The more an economy relies on imports, as Venezuela does, the more the rising prices of imports will add to the cost of living, thus reinforcing the expectation among citizens that inflation will continue to accelerate, driving up wages, prices, and even more. And uh, so, with that being said, really, they don't get to the crux of the problem with Venezuela. It's, uh, it's dictatorship and socialism. They're a resource-rich nation, oil and otherwise. And, uh, you know, there's no reason why they should have gotten this place in this in the first place. Uh, people like Hugo Chavez, who uh, took control after a coup and implemented socialism, Maduro is taking it into uh, overdrive. And uh, it's quite... Uh, it's it's horrible what's going on there and the people are suffering because of it and uh and it's a shame because it really does not necessarily need to happen considering where it is so it says, let's take a look here at uh some of the venezuelan hyperinflation here in pictures package of diapers is pictured next to eight million bolivars or one dollar and 22 cents look at that that's what uh all that paper will pick up those little diapers for you there. Poor Venezuelans without bank accounts have for months been carrying wads of cash to make basic purchases. Inflation hit 
1,700% in July as a, as a country's econo economy continued to suffer, Reuters reported. A kilogram package of corn flour is pictured next to 2.5 million bolivars, or 38 cents. Wow, look at that. People walking past graffiti that says Maduro misery. Indeed, and they're exactly right. They, the people know that what the problem is. They know what's going on. And the problem is Maduro and socialism. President uh, Maduro uh, said economic war was being waged against Venezuela by its adversaries. No, he doesn't take personal responsibility for the actions and for what's going on in Venezuela. He's going to blame others. With wealthy business owners raising prices to put pressure on the socialist government. Such a phenomenon was seen in Salvador Allende's Chile before the 1973 U.S.-backed coup. He said the new measures announced Friday would bring stability to the country. Yeah, good luck with that. Look at all the stuff missing from the markets there. Interesting indeed. Lots and lots of uh, problems going on there. There's also a picture. Here's a roll of toilet paper worth 2.6 million bolivars or 40 cents. Here's some carrots. A kilogram of carrots is pictured next to 3 million bolivars or 46 cents. And here's the chicken picture. 2.4 kilo chicken is pictured next to 14.6 million bolivars or $2.22. So fascinating indeed. It's and here's tomatoes. A kilogram of tomatoes costs about five million bolivars or seventy six cents. Wow, pretty crazy stuff. Here's a roll of toilet paper next to two point six million bolivars. And uh, rice, two point five million bolivars or thirty eight cents. Very interesting indeed. Now, with that being said, it all comes to this: what we all understand here, and that is silver. So the silver spot price in Venezuela, now it's down 1.9%. Oh my, maybe they're recovering. No, no, no. It's, uh, it is uh, 3 million. Uh, this is the Venezuelan Boulevard. 3,603,555. Uh, Boulevard. So 3,603,555 Boulevard for one ounce of silver. And if you look back here, it's, um, you know, you can get, that's not, that's kind of crazy. Basically, that's about, that's less than a dollar. Wait a minute, that must be, something must be wrong here. How do they uh, measure that? Uh, because that would be a whole lot more. That would be, less than 50 cents for an ounce of silver. Unless it's a different metric, I'm not sure. Whatever the VEF is, and uh, let's see here. So if that's um, silver price, 98. If you look at the records here, that must be a different metric. It's got to be a slight. I don't know how they measure the the uh, the boulevard here, but if this picture is showing eight million boulevards and this is showing three million boulevards, then that would mean that silver would be translated to being cents per ounce. Literally crazy, crazy. So I don't know if this is exactly translated right, or maybe they're met using a different metric. But nonetheless, it's interesting. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe some of you might know how this is measured, the VEF. But <clears throat> here, take a look from a 2011, all the way up here through here, when they have a relatively stable currency. And a look here. In 2018, boom, it just goes sky high here. Really crazy, crazy stuff. And uh, <clears throat> over the the uh, price over a month, it's up 98 percent over the month. Over the year, it's up two million one hundred fifty thousand percent. Over five years, it's up two uh, point four million percent. Wow, crazy! 
Nonetheless, fascinating indeed. Post your thoughts below uh, about the situation in Venezuela. And thanks again to all of y'all watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe and extend a multitude of gratitude to you all.